You know, it never fails. Here comes a stop sign. Seems like every time I come to a stop sign and I sit for a while, the pedal slowly drops to the floor. You know, other than that, the brakes are fine. They're stopping fine. There's no noises. I'm suspecting a hydraulic problem, but we're going to bring you along today on Tech Garage. Diagnose and fix this Impala. Welcome to season three of Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. You know, the hows and whys of all automotive systems. We're gonna take you through diagnostics, inspection, and repair on all types of vehicles. Now I'm talking about vehicles right out in your driveway. This is gonna be a highly enabling show because we're gonna take you along for the ride. I'm John Gardner, Brian Gregory's back with us. Great to be here. This is gonna be an exciting season three, John. We're staying true to our name. We're diving into the technology and the engineering behind so many of the vehicle systems that you, the DIYers, is doing each and every day. And you're gonna see that today as we dive into the hydraulic system on our Impala. And a little bit later, we're gonna bring in a project, an Acura RSX, appropriately named RSX Resurrection, because it's a dud. But with some vision and some imagination, man, this thing's gonna turn into a diamond. A little bit later also, we're gonna visit Josh Hart. Now he's with Bernie's Race Performance. He drives a top alcohol dragster, Brian. I mean, we're gonna tie in the performance angle to everything we do here in the shop. This is a great season, I am so excited. But Brian, the first order of business is to check out our Impala with a sink and brake pedal. Absolutely, and that can be a sinking feeling if you've ever had that happen, especially with kids in the car or sitting at a stoplight, no fun. So the first step was to inspect all four wheels, all of the brake lines. We want to check the rubber hoses, where they marry up to the hard lines, those clamps that mount them to the body of the car. That was all good. Again, you're looking for obvious and non-obvious leaks. I like to, with the suspension unloaded in this case, actually look at the brake hose and see when I turn the wheel back and forth, can we force a weep, can we force a leak? It doesn't appear that we have any at all four corners. So I feel pretty good about our problem being up here in the master cylinder area. So that's the next step. I'm gonna get my flashlight. I'm gonna check all these connections. And John, how's that master cylinder really work? Now Brian suspects a master cylinder, and master cylinder is the heart of the brake system, but we need to look at the entire system and understand a little bit about hydraulics. And our friends at ATEC actually sent us this trainer that's incorporating these hydraulic gauges and the whole brake system right in it. So let's start at the master. Now the master's job is to convert mechanical energy into hydraulic energy, and then it's gonna send the hydraulic fluid and the pressure down to either disc brakes or drum brakes or four-wheel disc brakes or four-wheel drum brakes if you have an old car, but that's its job. Now, how does it work? It's real simple. I'm gonna show it to you. We're gonna use this as a brake pedal. Now, this would be located inside your car. I simply come down, I'm gonna push it, and I'm gonna transfer the motion through this vacuum booster here. Now, we got a vacuum pump right here. You can have engine vacuum, or you can have an electric pump like this. If you have a diesel or a high-end car, you may even have a pump like this. It's supplying vacuum, and it's helping apply the pressure into the master, and I can push it down, and you can see it's pretty easy but the key here is to look at these gauges I mean I'm putting a thousand psi with hardly any pressure I can just push down on this pretty easily and I'm getting a thousand psi of pressure or really close to it in the rears and up to 2,000 up in the front just depends on the system and how it's built now how does that work well Pascal's law or law of hydraulics it's a complex mathematical formula but I'll simplify it for you if you think about this master cylinder in the size of the master cylinder, it's gonna put out pressure. And depending on the size of where that pressure's going, for example, look down here at our caliper. Now our caliper is big in size versus or comparable to the wheel cylinder. Now this big size here is gonna fill up with fluid right here. Now the key is it's gonna move half the distance but see twice the pressure if it's a bigger piston. Now calipers are low drag brake systems. So they turn, they're right next to it. They don't have to go very far, but we have to squeeze on both sides which takes a lot of pressure. And Pascal Law says once again, half the distance, twice the pressure versus the wheel cylinder. Now if I pull off our drum right here, you can actually see the wheel cylinder and the wheel cylinder is located in the drum brakes. And the wheel cylinder you can see here has actually half or even less area 
than the caliper has. Well, what is that? Well, if I got pressure inside of here, see, it can travel further, but not as much pressure. Well, we don't need as much pressure inside of the drum brakes because they're self-energizing or dual action. They come out, they kind of carry around the action, the energy, and they stop. So I don't need as much pressure with drum brakes. My hydraulic piston is going to cause that. Now you can see the whole system. You saw it in action in the pressures. Brian suspects that master cylinder. I do too. Let's see what he found out. Just like any good diagnostic procedure, you always want to try to isolate the problem. Check the components of a system and see if you can find what that problem is. That's what we've done up here at the master cylinder. Remember, no leaks at the wheels, no leaks at the brake lines. We did a full visual inspection up here at the master cylinder, the distribution block, all the connections. We had no leaks, but that pedal was still sinking. So we've now isolated the master cylinder. All it's connected to now is the rod going to the brake pedal. So we've got the brake system out of the line. So we're going to apply a little bit of pressure here and test the system. But before I did that, I had to top the reservoir off to make sure I had a full hopper of the right brake fluid so we can get an accurate test. So hey, John, would you apply a little bit of light pressure on the pedal and let's see if this is still leaking. Brian, it's still dropping to the floor like it did in the parking lot. There you go. So there's our sign, right? It's absolutely the master cylinder and it's inside the master cylinder because there's no leaks on the outside. So we got to replace the master cylinder, but to do that right, you've got to do something called a bench bleed. John's going to show you exactly what that looks like when we get back. Stay with us on Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts, is being brought to you by McGuire's since 1901. Dustless blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM for radio since 1977. And by Advance Auto Parts, let's get you back on the road. Perfect, got it bench bled. Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts. Brian, I got this one all bench bled for you. Perfect, thanks, I'm gonna get it installed. Can I get that one? Perfect. All right. Well, we got the old master cylinder off. Now you can see, you can get a couple of options. You can get one with just a cylinder body, or we actually chose the wherever, the complete master cylinder itself. Now, what's that bench bleeding all about? Well, I actually have it right here located in the vise. And what we're doing is we're going to try to remove all the air from the inside of the master cylinder so we don't shove it down the body or the system all the way through the car, and it'll make bleeding easier a little bit later. It's a real simple process. I'm just going to take some brake fluid here. Now, make sure you use the right brake fluid. There's dot three, four, five, and even 5.1. Now, dot three, four, and 5.1 are glycol based. Dot five is silicone based. We're going to use our dot three. The higher the number, the higher the boiling point. Now I'm just going to go ahead and fill it up here. I went down to advance and I got me a bleeder kit right here. You can see it. Nothing more than some hoses and some fittings. I put it into the master cylinder and then I put my lines up there and I submerged them. Why? So as I'm purging that, the air is going back up into the system and I'm getting rid of it. You can actually see the bubbles in there. Now you want to throw a couple of big strokes and some small ones. And you can see actually how hard it is. You remember earlier with that brake booster? Boy, it gave us a lot of driver assist. So I'm pushing it in there, I'm bleeding it. Now once all the air bubbles are gone, then it's pretty well bench bled. Now what's going on inside of there? This is pretty cool. I got a cutaway right here and you can actually see it. Inside the master cylinder, you got a couple of pistons. You got a primary piston and you got a secondary piston. Now on those pistons, you have a couple of seals, a primary seal, primary seal. So this is the primary seal, secondary piston, primary seal, primary piston. Well, what's that all about? Well, it pressurizes these two chambers. That's how you get the actual hydraulics we showed you earlier pressured down to the wheel brakes. As I pressurize it, I'm going to get all the air out of here and bench bleed it. But you also have secondary seals. Here's the secondary seal for the secondary piston and the secondary seal for the primary piston. It's the one located in the back. If you ever have any brake fluid uh, leaking down your booster, it's usually the secondary seal on the primary piston. Now our Impala, what's going on? We're putting the brakes to the floor. It's slowly dropping. Well, check this out right here. These primary pistons are bleeding by internally. So what happens when we're holding that pressure, the internal pressure is going from this high pressure chamber over this lip seal into the low pressure chamber and the pedal slowly dropping to the floor. 
Now Brian's over there installing the master cylinder. I'm sure he's in good shape and I'm pretty sure this is gonna go ahead and fix our Impala. Let's see how he's coming. All right, just topping off the master cylinder here after the bleed, the reservoir is exactly where it's supposed to be. We're gonna get that button back up. Now, here's a couple good wrenching practices for you when you're replacing a master cylinder. When you remount it to the firewall, leave those nuts a little bit loose and give yourself some slack on the master cylinder so you can get these brake lines appropriately and properly reconnected. You don't want to have any chance of cross-threading or the flare that's on the end of them, any imperfections happening to that. You've got to get a good seal so it won't leak. Now the other thing that comes up is when you've got perfectly matching brake lines like these, you may want to make a note, either label them or take a digital picture before you disassemble it so you know which line goes into which port on your new master cylinder. Now some vehicles have different size ports and it's obvious, but you wanna make sure you get that part of it right. So we've bled the system. Now imagine the amount of work if John hadn't bench bled it and all the air that would have been in that master cylinder we didn't have to worry about. We're in good shape. Let's go ahead. We got our chief tech in there. Chase, give it a pump. Let's see how it feels. The brake pedal is good and hard, John. We're good to go. Brian, you got it whooped, man. That pedal's hard, no leaks. We're in good shape. That's awesome. I'm gonna get the air box reinstalled and we're good to go. Well, get warmed up with your imagination because after break, we're gonna come back with our project, RSX Resurrection. We'll be right back with more Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Well, welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts. Well, we got the door closed and we got our project, RSX Resurrection, right where we need, uh-oh, to replace that as well. Oh, boy. Project RSX Resurrection, right where we need to be. You know what, Brian? Vision, imagination, my friend. We're I got gonna a good need deal. something. I got a good deal. Good you frame, K20 motor. Man, there's some potential here. You know, and a lot of people do this. You get a project car or a smoke and deal on one, and the temptation right away is to bolt on a lot of power, a lot of performance type of upgrades. And we're gonna do that, and I'm excited about what we're gonna have, but I think maybe we should start in reverse. Let's make sure we upgrade the whole brake system so that we can add whatever suspension and power upgrades we want and know that she'll stop on a dime in any condition. Now when it comes to brakes, you're gonna have a couple of choices. And before we get into those choices, let's understand the basics about brakes once again. All right, now brakes job is to change kinetic energy, the movement of this rotor into heat energy. What happens? The pads actually contact here, the friction and pressure then dissipates into heat energy. So keep that in mind. Now this is a place where you can participate with us. So put down the coffee for a minute. You put your hands together, you rub really hard. Well, you feel that heat, that's what the brakes are doing. It's important to dissipate that heat. Now we have here our wherever platinum professional brake pads, which is an awesome choice. They're ceramic right here. You can see the rotor is a ventilated rotor and you wanna keep in mind the thickness of the rotor. That's a good choice. We're actually gonna step it up to the power stop, the evolution series here. What's the difference? Well, they're both great products, but this one right here is drilled and slotted. Once again, heat dissipation. We're talking about getting rid of that heat. These drills and slots are gonna allow us to do this. These are directional rotors, so we'll have to put this one on the front passenger side, and you can see they're also gonna cause a good bed-in process. Well, what is that? Well, when we go and we start driving it, you follow the manufacturer's bed-in process, and you get this pad layer transferred across the whole rotor, and this is gonna last for a long time. And we have a sliding caliper right here, and if I pull these pins out, you can see it's gonna move back and forth. So what happens when the pad's in there, the actual calipers are gonna move when you apply the brakes. Remember the hydraulics earlier? Well, I got hydraulics on this side, pads come out, the whole caliper assembly moves. When it moves, the pads contact the rotor. Now, why is it so important to lube it with some kind of brake lube? Is because, check this out, I got a cutaway, and a lot of people don't understand. The only thing that's moving the pads away from that rotor is this square cut seal inside of there. Believe it or not, it deforms when you push the brake and when you release it, it goes back to shape. So that has to move, those slides have to move. Well, we chose the power stop with the drilled and slotted rotors for our project RSX Resurrection. Now Brian's underway and he's got some more tips to share with us. Okay, final retaining screw out of the old rotor. 
And you can take a glance at this assembly and say, wow, she's got a few years of experience. Certainly a lot of oxidation on that rotor. You want to inspect the hub assembly when you get that off. And you want this surface to be clean and rust free. You know, there's really not any burrs or anything on this surface, but we're thinking performance here. We know this suspension is going to have a heavy load on the wheels, so we want the truest possible tracking in all conditions. And we certainly want maximum stopping power, which is what this is all about. So. We've got the caliper removed, the caliper mounting bracket removed. We've got our best friend, the bungee cord, holding it up out of the way. And before we compress this caliper piston, which you can do various ways, you can use a C-clamp or a compressor tool, whatever you prefer, but we took note of that dust boot around there. No cracks, no leaks, no seals, no seal issues there. That's doing its job in getting that piston back in. Remember the rubber ring John showed you inside the caliper that goes around the caliper piston? That's gonna be in a rough environment. A lot of heat happens in there, and that's all gotta to work together to get the proper spring return rate to get the piston back in. And that all really starts with the caliper mounting bracket. This foundationally has to be in great shape. Our slide pins have to be properly lubed so that in a lot of heat, in all conditions, they can function properly. I also have cleaned up the mounting bracket surface here because again, you want that to be true. You can clean it up with a wire brush wheel, sandpaper, whatever you'd prefer, but you want this to be a great marriage back here on the back of the bracket. Make sure it's all clean. Old car, a lot of rust. So with the slide pins, we got new boots here. We got one installed. You can see, compared to the old boot, it's actually a good bit taller. There's more spring return in this boot. That's gonna help that assembly work properly. Also on the old slide pin, I've got it wiped down here with all the lube off of it. You wanna make sure you add new lube to the slide pins so that they can function properly. You wanna do the same thing on the other side and reinstall. Okay, so slide pins in, properly lubed. Next step is to install our new drilled and slotted rotor. Now, it's possible that I've been guilty of this as well. Pretty sure you have too. A lot of people used to use brake clean to clean these off. You know what, performance, do it right. Warm soap and water to get this clean. I'm gonna do it again because I've touched it with my gloves here and it's contaminated. I'm gonna do it again before I button it all back up. Caliper mounting bracket goes next, then the caliper, then the new Evolution pads and we will have made a substantial upgrade for not a lot of money on the project car. Now, John's on his way to see how the big boys do it at a local speed shop, so stay with us for more Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts, is being brought to you by Spider Auto, specializing in automotive and truck accessories. Steel rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Clamp tight, the clamp making tool. And by Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back on the road. Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts. Now I'm excited to introduce a new segment called the Performance Playbook. And you can see it's done right here at Bernie Speed Shop where they build some of the fattest rides on the planet, including this A-Fuel Dragster, owned and operated by Josh Hart. Now Josh, we were talking about brakes on the show today. We did a master cylinder and we upgraded some brakes, but man, nothing to this level here. I mean, this thing's flying. Tell me, how do you stop this beast? At about 285 mile an hour, I throw the parachutes. I grab the handbrake. It applies the pressure through the master cylinder and transfers everything to a set of carbon fiber brakes. Now your brakes back there, I see you got, uh, what, one, two, three, four calipers? Four calipers, four piston each, and it's carbon fiber rotors and carbon fiber pads. Now you can see performance all over this place, and Drew's gonna show us some performance tips on brake systems on a 383 stroker Corvette. This is our 78 Corvette. Came in old, tired, a lot of miles, a lot of squeaking, a lot of wore out components that need to be refurbished. Uh, we had some leaks, we had some wore out rotors. Uh, the components weren't just up to par. So we went through and disassembled the whole rear suspension, pulled the rotors, pulled the calipers, pulled the lines, flushed the brake fluid, cleaned all that old stuff out of it. We took our uh, advanced auto parts rotor, our caliper, brake lines, reinstalled all our components. Everything got painted, 
try to give it the original look. You got the cross hatching of on the rotors. It gives you that good bite on the on the pads. This one we went to a semi-metallic to give you the best of both worlds. Less brake dust, good stopping power, and they last a little bit longer than your normal ceramic. With all the new advanced auto parts parts, you get better stopping power. You don't get all the brake dust. The wear and tear is gone. We just literally shave some years off of the system. That's this week's performance playbook. Back to Tech Garage for the email question of the week. John, Daniel from Key West emailed us, and he's got a 2012 Chevy Camaro with a brake shutter. Now, he replaced the pads and the rotors, but you know what? After time, the shutter came back. What can we tell Daniel? Well, Daniel, it's a real common problem. You know, it's a pedal pulsation. Cars are getting heavier, rotors are getting lighter. Three measurements to make. Real simple. First one is just the thickness of the rotor. I mean, you have to go around and measure it. Make sure it's not falling like this one really thin. This one's beyond specifications. It's stamped right on it. The other two are very important. The first one is DTV, disc thickness variation. Well, you come around in eight different points around the rotor, you measure it, and you want to make sure that you don't have any in and out, any differences, really less than five ten thousandths. And you can also go with lateral runout. That's what causes DTV. You put a dial indicator on there and you spin it around. If it's warped in any way, it's gonna cause that disc thickness variation. Let me give you a cool story. Think about it, one mile, that thing's gonna touch 836 times it goes around. In 6,000 miles, that's more than 5 million times, man. That's causing disc thickness variation. That's causing the pedal pulsation, Daniel. That would be a problem. How can you fix that? Well, you know what? It starts and ends with the calipers, the slide pins, everything functioning properly here so it can actuate properly. Use the good stuff. Use the lube in all the right spots, whether you've got a floating or a sliding caliper. And you know what? Don't forget about this retaining ring, the spring ring inside around the caliper piston. This is the means by which this piston retracts and gets that inboard pad away from the rotor. So if that's good and these are good and you still got shutter, you might want to check your wheel bearing. I'll tell you what, the Malibu's stopping great with the new master cylinder yeah. and we need to some, add some power to the RSX with the drilled and slotted rotors. I, it's doing great. Awesome. Well, if you need us during the week, don't forget to find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We'll see you next week for more Tech Garage where we get you back on the road. Production assistance for Tech Garage is provided by Chipola College, located in Mariana, Florida. Founded in 1947, Chipola was recently ranked as one of the top three community colleges in the United States.